How's it going, Gray Boys? It's week four, and we get to start this episode with a bye. But before we get into that, I gotta say thank you guys so much. We have recently broken 2,500 subscribers on the channel, and as a result, I want to give back a little bit. So I am going to be doing a Goonmaster shirt giveaway. However, it's going to be on Twitter, and we'll do it once we hit 200 followers on Twitter. Now, this is, at the moment, going to be a pretty much exclusive, one-of-a-kind Goonmaster shirt. I own the only other one in existence, so it's not just something that you can get anywhere else. Again, though, that's going to happen on Twitter uh, once we reach 200 followers. So if you want a chance to win that shirt, uh, you'll have to go over and follow me there if you're not already. And then once we hit that number, I'll post a tweet explaining uh, how to enter. So again, thank you guys so much for 2,500. Next step is 5,000. But let's go ahead and just get into this episode. We've got some recruiting to do this week. Well, maybe not. We've used up all our points, but I know we have some visits that we can set up. And I'm curious to see where we're sitting. A lot of good Juco players on our board and I think we're doing okay uh, trying to pick them up. We're in the lead with Drew Anderson by a while. We're struggling with Brandon Williams. Avery Rawls we're behind on, but uh, we're also not giving him any points. And we also haven't scouted him. Jared Brown we're in the lead with. Marcus Brown we're in the lead with. And I don't think that they're brothers. Uh, Rashad Ross not too far back on. So all these guys where they're not far back on and just kind of nobody's looking at them, or it seems like we are decently in the leader, at least in the fight. In fact, this kicker is our uh, the only player that we are really putting in points into that we aren't in the lead. We're losing five a week towards Central Michigan. They have their visit scheduled. I don't know if this is worth it. We do have another kicker on the board. Again, it's Central Michigan recruiting them, so I guess these guys just do not want us to get a kicker, which is a really petty thing for a rival to do, but I absolutely understand it. So uh, we'll have to offer a scholarship when we can and set up visits, but eventually we'll get a chance with one of these guys. So for the 10 of them that are ready for visits, we'll go ahead and set that up. We want to go after Central Michigan if we can, and we don't have the option to do that. We don't have great visits either, so I guess we'll just go early rather than late. So we'll send this kicker to the Ohio game. Ricky Neal can also go to the Ohio game. No, we can send him to the Central Michigan game. That way it'll be a little bit later in the season. And Luke Clark, we don't want the competitive visit, so he will go also to that Central Michigan game. As many guys as I think that we can get going to that could be nice. Start stacking up those complimentary visits, and that would be nice. Uh, that and the Ohio game, so uh, if they have a complimentary at Central Michigan, we'll send them there. If they have it at Ohio, we'll send them to that one instead. So pretty simple recruiting there for week four. Uh, we'll go ahead and advance towards that week five where we will play Ohio. Uh, we'll take a look at ESPN to see if anything crazy happened, and then we will get into our game. So two guys currently scheduled to visit again. That's Brandon Williams and Marcus Brown, but a bunch more ready to visit this week. We'll set that up, obviously, before we get into anything. But first, let's take a look at ESPN, see who lost last week and maybe what games are going to be played this week. Uh, a lot of teams winning Oregon. My Ducks lose to USC, the current number four team. And the Trojans are three and one. They will host the other team from LA this week against UCLA. They better win this one. It's only against number 14 team. Uh, Wisconsin uh, undefeated number five is going to play a number 22 Ohio State. Uh, Oklahoma lost to LSU last week. We had, uh, let's see, UCLA beat Stanford last week. That's a ranked matchup. Auburn will play Tennessee. Tennessee just lost to Florida. West Virginia at number four just lost in overtime to Maryland. Uh, that's got to be a very disappointing loss for those guys. Ohio State lost to the Ohio team that we are going to play this week. They lost 34-21. That is worrying for me. The Buckeyes start 1-2 and two on the season. Uh-oh, they're 93 overall. They just lost to Ohio. What's going to happen to us? That's, that's really, really worrying. Let's get our recruiting done really quick. 
uh, again, probably just not even to move points around this week, but we will just schedule the five visits that we have. Mike Williams, uh, 68 overall, gonna go to this Ohio game. I wish it could be later, but uh, it's sometimes nice to get them out of the way early. Same thing with Sean Muhammad. He's gonna come to the Ohio game. Sean Mitchell can go to Central Michigan. Brian Valentin can go to either one. Nobody else is really fighting for him. He's only 62 overall in a JUCO, so he's not like a big deal. We have a little bit of a lead, so we're going to send him to the Ohio game. Try to get more of those complimentary visits there. And then uh, Mike Moore will go to the Central Michigan game. One benefit of sending guys to that Central Michigan game is we do get more XP for that because we're setting up a visit versus a rival. So what can we do here? Ohio 2-1. We are two in one. Uh, we are not expected to win. They are slightly higher overall. Their defense is going to be the main factor for them in being better. Uh, they scored just barely more points per game, 0.3. They run the ball much better than us, averaging 255 yards rushing in their first three games. Uh, defensively, though, we have been much better. Best rush defense in the country, top 20 pass defense for a number three total defense this year. We are losing uh, minus two to three in the turnover differential. So that's a little bit disappointing. Uh, we go win-win loss. They go loss, win-win. They lost to Oklahoma, beat Northwestern, and then beat Ohio State. They have not played a G5 opponent yet. All power five for them to start, which means they should be coming on with a full head of steam. And we are definitely going to be the worst opponent they've played so far overall wise. So we just have to hope that maybe we catch them off guard and maybe they're a little bit tired. This is their third road game already of the season. 79 overall with a 77 offense and an 82 defense. So honestly, things are pretty close overall wise. And we know that we've done okay in that department this year. Uh, we're just going to go with the standard home uniforms for our conference opener here in the MAC. And we're going to have them go with their standard aways. Honestly, they're exactly opposite. We have green helmet, green jersey, white pants. They have white helmet, white jersey, green pants. So hopefully we don't get confused. I just got to remember we are the home team. So we have the colorful jerseys. Now, one thing that I've forgotten to do that I was planning on doing is we've been using the same playbook uh, as we were using when we were at Coastal Carolina. But because we're the offensive coordinator, my plan was to come in and use our head coach's playbook. So we'll go ahead and see what Brian does. He is an Eastern Michigan alum, apparently, and on offense, he runs the Virginia Tech playbook. So that might be something that throws us off this week, but that's what we're going to be switching to on offense. So hopefully the new playbook doesn't screw us up too much, but I've been wanting to do that and then just I keep forgetting. So we finally had that in place. Offensively, again, their best stat is they're rushing. They pass the ball okay, but not really enough. Uh, they do get a decent amount of yards and a decent amount of points. And defensively, they are good at stopping the run, uh, but they can't seem to stop the pass, which is pretty good news for us because our passing is where we've been uh, most successful this year. Tons of guys visiting. We're not going to really focus on those visiting goals unless it's a blowout. We just want to make sure that we win. Um, their top players, a kicker, a left guard, and a free safety. Uh, 92 down into those mid-80s. Kicker's pretty good. Long of 51, so he has a good chance to pick that up. 6-6 six six on his field goals. That might make it a little bit more difficult keeping them uh, from scoring points. So we are back here at Rainierson Stadium. Uh, our conference home opener, our conference opener, hoping to get things done here against Ohio. And the Bobcats are going to go with heads and they win the toss. So we are going to start with the football today. Let's see what we do with the kickoff. It's just a return to the 19. New playbook definitely will throw us off a little bit. Uh, usually not the time that you want to start this and if they're gonna bring pressure we're just gonna audible to a four verts on first down you, you come on you think that we're going to uh allow you just to bring a blitz and not send one deep why maybe open the safety it's going with them broussard can't come down with it the diving one-handed attempt is incomplete if he had just gone up with both hands he comes down with that because the safety overran the route 
Uh, instead, it's second and 10 with the incompletion. We'll hand it off. Jesse Wagner breaks a tackle, but unfortunately, that means he lost his forward progress, so it's now third and 10. So already the defense of Ohio starting to give us some problems. Looking for Serge Mitchell on third and 10. Maybe we go to Nixon. The pressure is coming. A could be open. It's a bad throw. Oh, Ed Burge just missed, and McIntosh gets his hands on it. We're going to have to punt this one away which is really, really disappointing. A fumble recovered by them. Uh, so they have the ball. They must have blocked the punt. Well, I'm not sure where they got the ball at. It could have just been that they uh, muffed the punt, but we'll see. They start their drive. Okay, it was a muffed punt. They start it from about the 50. Five-yard rush on first down sets up a second and five. He loses two yards, so third and six. Can the defense get the stop? No. A big pass from green to love for 17. Sets them up with a first down. They lose a yard on first down, second 11. They go back to the ground. They get six. It's third and six once again. And it's an incomplete pass. So I assume they'll be kicking the field goal. This kicker is not missed on the year. Six of six. And that's going to help us out. Uh, a false start from the offense. will back them up five before this guy gets a chance to put one through the uprights. So this time... Five yards further back. It's a 49 and a half yard field goal from the right hash. The kick is up. He's going to have the distance. That looked good to me, and I think it was. Looked like the ref's hands were moving up. Uh, UCF beat Central Michigan. That's good news for us. And it was good. So three points for Ohio after we failed to move the ball on offense. And we get another very mediocre kick return out to the 23 to start our drive. We need to go forward this time. Wagner, nothing doing on the counter. And we're going to lose two yards. This Ohio defense is smothering us so far in this game. I would love to be able to complete a pass or have something good happen. But it's not there so far. B, right bumper may be open. Lucky that one wasn't picked off. I had guys open. I was just too late making the throw. So it'll be third and a mile as we try to move the ball at all. Ed Bird needs to find somebody for the completion. I'm going to be throwing to Serge Mitchell here. Man, covering him. No, it's Nixon. He comes down with a, with a DB blanketing him. And we get our first positive momentum of the game. Well, I'm lucky that that one just wasn't intercepted. But we are at the 35, handing this one off up the middle. Wagner not having a great start to his game. Uh, his expectations, he's set pretty high the past few. But he's pretty slow to get going here. Let's throw in an option just to see what happens. Broussard will be the pitch man on this one. And Bird getting the pitch out. Broussard getting a block. He's got the corner. He's got a little stiff arm cheese. And we're across midfield just like that. I'm not so sure how good our kicker is going to be in this situation, but I wouldn't be against taking a field goal. Instead, right now, we'll go play action. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Over the middle, there's Wilson wide open. The coverage breaking down for some reason. Then we get 23 yards, and that might be enough to be in field goal range. Ed now with two completions in a row. We'll hand it off up the middle, and Wagner is just still not getting the blocks that we've been seeing recently. So he gets three yards, but I don't know if it's enough. We'll try a toss play. Those haven't worked great for us as Jerome Simmons will come in and he's going to get no blocking. At least not enough to get to the corner. So just back to the line of scrimmage. Seeing a lot of third down so far in this game. This one, we just need seven. We'll see if we can find somebody open. And there it is early Wilson on that seam wide open we find him right at the right time and it's first and goal a chance for us to take the lead my big question is can we do anything to run the ball in this game we're gonna try another counter jesse wagner looks like he might have some blockers and that time he fights through a little bit of the contact he gets four yards last game he was averaging somewhere around six and a half yards per carry this time it's a yard and a half Still early, so things could change, but I'm not happy with that. Jerome Simmons on second goal right up the middle into the end zone. We're going to take the 7-3 lead here. We desperately needed that one. So the extra point is good with 55 seconds left in the half. We'll see what we can do. They return the kick to the 20. Uh, first down is a one-yard rush. Second down, an eight-yard rush. It's third and one, and they don't do it. They 
Uh, there's a one-yard rush. It's fourth and inches. I got to imagine they're going to punt this one away, and I want to watch it. I'm curious to see what we can do as there is just 13 seconds left in this first quarter. Uh, kick is away cleanly. I don't... Didn't look like the best, but that is a pretty decent punt. No blocking, really? As he runs up the middle, and Leon Walters gets 12 yards. So, honestly, it's a pretty good field position after the defense holds for the three and out. And as the final play of the first quarter is here, we're going to hand it off, and Wagner finally getting a decent run. Picks up six on first down. That's going to end our first quarter. Up 7-3, a chance here to extend the lead. Our offense a little bit slow to get started. Uh, same with the defense, but both of them look to be in gear now. What can we do to start off this second quarter? Nixon has not a whole lot of pressure on him. I'm going to throw the quick pass. He's got that short curl, and he is open. They got to play up a little bit higher on him if they want to cover him. Quick pass works for a first down as Edbird moves above 50% passing on the day. Handing it off again to Jesse Wagner up the middle. Nice little move there. He finds a little bit of space and gets eight yards. So we're starting to really move the ball well on offense. I think we've got a good mix of running and passing. This one, a good throw to Broussard. He holds on through the contact. He had that space. He gets 13. A little too tough for them to cover the corner route. Works out well, and we'll go quick pitch again to Wagner. We need a little bit of blocking. It doesn't seem like there's any there. The spin move allows him to get out of the backfield and get a positive yard on the play. Probably pretty frustrating for him to start this game getting so few yards. Uh, this could be dangerous. We're going play action as they're going to bring a blitz. Can we hold on long enough over the middle? Mitchell comes down with it. The safety out of position. Can't make the tackle, and it's a 27-yard passing touchdown. As Ed goes now 6 of 9 for over 100 yards, and we extend the lead. Just a really bad play from the safety there. The extra point is good. Uh, they take the touchback on the kickoff, and now it's time for Ohio to hopefully answer back. That's what they got to be thinking. They just beat Ohio State, right? So you better believe they think they could beat Eastern Michigan. Second and six leads to a third and five. And then a big sack, an 11-yard loss. It's fourth and 16. That's the stop. Uh, fair catch at the 31-yard line. And this game could be over in a hurry. If we have our way, look into the air again, and again, they're going to bring pressure on the play action. Throwing one up. Nixon can't come down with it through the contact. He wasn't able to make the move on his route quick enough like I thought, so kind of bad timing on the throw. Second down, we'll hand it off to Jesse. Try to get positive yards. Little cut back, and he gets five. I think it's fair to say that our offensive line has certainly improved as the game has gone on. On this third down, we're going to go to the air. I'm kind of looking at Serge Mitchell. A tough throw, but we have him come back to the ball, and that's an easy catch for him. It's a couple of free yards at the end as well. So midway through this second quarter, we are back at midfield. If we could go up 21-3, to three, you would say that it's almost impossible for Ohio to come back in this one. Well, got to keep throwing. They're not doing a great job stopping it so far, and uh, Mitchell and Nixon with the one-on-one -on -one coverage out there I'm going to throw up a bomb. If Ed has the arm strength, this could be good. Mitchell, oh, in his hands, and he drops it. That surely would have been a touchdown. Instead, we get the third and six in from just across midfield. We're going to run the ball here. Could be four down territory, but Simmons loses four. 58 went completely unblocked into the backfield. So we will punt this one away. Uh, no return. Uh, it's bad starting field position. Five-yard rush from the five gets them to the 10, second and 10. Third and inches as he picks up another five. They do get the first down running a lot. There's a loss of four. Uh, incomplete pass, and that's going to be fourth down. I just, I'm really confused at the play calling for these guys sometimes, but I can't complain. So now Ohio forced to punt it away and inside two minutes left in the half we're going to have to try to go down the field and score any points would be nice the out route we find broussard oh if i throw that just a millisecond earlier i think that would have been jumped and intercepted well let's see what ed bird can do the pass attack will continue two safeties on this one will throw the tough throw but it finds nixon he's off to the races a diving tackle prevents that from becoming much more but we're almost inside the red zone, still with a minute and 26 to work with. 
Coach must have used one of our timeouts because we only have two remaining. Uh, but I don't know if we'll need him. We find Broussard there, and again, he holds on through the contact for the first and goal. I don't want to give Ohio the ball back with time to work, so we're going to slow things down and run it. They do get the ball to start the third quarter, so a chance there if we did just score immediately for them to score essentially back-to-back -back touchdowns on us. And if we're going to get the lead on them, we want to keep it uh, as big as possible through halftime. 40 seconds left, handing off to Jesse Wagner. He's going to cut it up field early. He got a yard. Now it's third and goal. The linebackers here for Ohio are doing a very solid job with their tackling. Seems pretty strong. There's another one. Wagner, maybe a chance to get in, but I hit a lineman, so it's fourth and goal. And with 15 seconds in the clock winding down, Coach is going to take us off the field and kick the field goal. Uh, and that's going to hurt even more. A little false start backs us up. Makes it a little bit more difficult for the kicker. Hopefully we can get this one. Not very long, just a 25-yarder. The kick is up. Looked good to me, and it is. So 17-3 with six seconds before the half. We'll see if Ohio can do anything on this kick return before we head into the locker rooms for halftime. It is a returnable ball. And he's going to break a tackle and then get hit. We got to cross the 25, and they've got two seconds left. So maybe this could be a chance for a big Hail Mary. We'll see. I kind of expect them to hand it off. So that's typically what the AI does. He could break this one. He's got some good blocks, and that's one of their best runs of eight yards. But it's all for naught as the clock expires on that play. So into the locker rooms we go. Up 14. Two touchdown advantage. Ohio struggling to score on offense. Uh, we're just able to get things done right now. Our defense has done the job. Uh, and the Bobcats need to come out and score a touchdown on this opening drive of the third quarter if, uh, if they want a chance to stay in this game. So let's go ahead and see what we can do there. The kickoff is taken for a touchback. They'll start at the 25. The two-yard rush followed by a five-yard penalty. Probably a false start gives them uh, second and eight. I'm not sure how the math there works, how it's still... Second and eight, but it is what it is. Third and nine now as they uh, go with a four-yard rush. They'll have to go to the air, and it's an incomplete pass. So the defense holds once again, and we get the ball. Uh, it's another good punt, but we get the ball with good field position. So what is it that Ohio can do to stop us? Their defense has had a few big uh, stops, a few big drives, but can they keep it consistent and get us off the field again? We've been using a lot of play action so far in this game, and they're bringing a lot of pressure when we throw them. And that time it works. Had our check down wide open, but I didn't make the throw in time, so it's a loss of 10. Third and 20, we're 50% on our third downs today, and we have to heave up a, a deep ball because otherwise we're not going anywhere. What can we do here? Who is going to be open, if anybody? I'm going to toss it up for Nixon. Or it's, no, it's Mitchell on that side. He's got the one-on-one, -on -one and that one is just incomplete. He couldn't get the positioning. And it's just good play from the DB, so the defense holds. We're going to punt it away. They get great field position that time, starting at the midfield. A four-yard rush on first down. But then they keep going backwards. They go forward for a nice run on first down, and then they lose yards always. So third and eight, it's fourth and inches. And they went for it on fourth down, converted the play. They take the sack. Big pass gives them a third and six. Pass is thrown away and on fourth and six. I got to expect they go for the field goal. This is a pretty long one. 51 yards this time. Two yards further than the one that they made earlier in the game. Kick is up. It's definitely got the distance. And again, yeah, it's good. So 17 to six. They scored again, but is it enough? At this rate, it's going to take them a lot of field goals to win the game. Uh, only three points at a time will certainly hurt. And they really got to hope that we don't manage to score again. And that's a great start to our drive as we're looking for the end zone. Wagner gets 10 yards and immediately a first down. That is working awfully well. Midway through this third quarter already. Let's hand it off to Wagner again. He's got some good blocking. And again, he's going to fall forward on the tackle. There's another six-yard pickup. His average per carry is starting to go up, and we'll hope for it to do the same here on the counter. He gets the block to seal the edge. It's really one guy to make miss. Juke didn't really work, but then he just ran him over anyways. 11 yards for him, up to 63 on the day. A little bit 
interesting how that one works across midfield we'll go play action they're bringing some pressure who's gonna be open b was there on the out route but i threw it way too late and it's an interception nickels the only chance to prevent that from becoming a pick six and oh my gosh i've done it again that's the second pick six that we've thrown this year we're minus three now on the turnover differential and just like that ohio is right back in this game pending this extra point it'll be 17 to 13 and now we're only up four that's a little bit scary so gotta hold on to the football oh that's really frustrating we had a chance to almost put that game out of reach instead we just completely gave it away and on first down of this drive the ohio momentum continues as they drop us for a loss oh you hate to see it well jerome is in and we're gonna run the option pitch gets out simmons can't really do anything there he got that one yard back but it's third and long almost immediately on this drive so we'll have to go to the air and now we're three of seven on our third downs not a whole lot of success as long as we don't throw a pick though that's pretty big right bumper maybe open wagner gets the catch but he's short i thought maybe he would have a chance to get up ahead of steam and break that tackle instead we're gonna have to punt the ball away and they start at the 30 now with a chance to take the lead on this drive as the oh my gosh a 15 yard penalty it must have been a pass interference against us 27 seconds they are moving pretty well first and 10 a big pass 32 yards they're inside the red zone a four yard run gets them inside the 10 on second and six fumble recovered by us the defense comes up with a big play there and that ended the third quarter. So to start the fourth quarter, we have the momentum off of the turnover. Ohio certainly looked like they were going to score points on that drive. But unfortunately, they can't hold on to the football. We come away with it. I almost just threw another pick. Oh, my gosh. I'm selling right now. Absolutely ridiculous. Second and ten, we just got to hold on to the football. So on this play, we're going to hand it off to Wagner and let him try to do anything. But the offensive line not getting a good push. Just back to the line of scrimmage, third and 10 again. At the start of this game, I thought we were going to win in an absolute blowout, but it has not happened. And now we have to convert a third down, and we have not done that well. We haven't done that in a long time. Finding Wilson, he's got a blocker, able to fall forward, and he gets the spot. Oh my gosh, that was all too scary, but we got it done that time. A lot of pressure here in front of the fans, trying to open up conference play with a win. We'll go read option. Jesse's going to get the handoff, and he's got a surprising amount of space there. It's six yards. Clock will continue to move. Let's go back to the triple option. Wilson coming in motion to be the pitch man this time, and I'm going to pitch it early. That was a mistake. That one could have been a fumble. Oh, awfully scary, but it works for the first down. All too scary, but as long as the ball keeps moving forward and the clock keeps moving down... We're in a good spot. Wagner with a blocker in front of him, moving so well there. That's a good 10 yards. He has the ability just to make a play at any given time. Definitely one of the biggest playmakers on the team. Jerome Simmons will come in. He's going to fight for some yards, but anything to keep that clock moving is important. And I think maybe we've lulled them into the right spot where we're going to try the play action. There's a chance that Serge Mitchell could be open, but the safety backs up one-on-one -on -one with the safety, and we take the sack. Couldn't get the pass off in time. It's third and 16. So at least the clock will be moving, but this is a long ways to go to convert. We got to hope for the best here. Just quickly make that final hot route before time expires. We're going to throw it up for Mitchell. He comes down with it. Just able to get a step as he makes his move. And it's enough space for him to come down with the catch and move the chains. If you are an Ohio fan right now, that has got to be so extremely disheartening. You had the chance to get the stop and take the lead. As Simmons gets some beautiful blocks and he's going to get inside the red zone. 28 yards. He had a spin move in there. It was completely unnecessary, but it works beautifully. And again, we move the chains as we'll move inside three minutes. Just not a whole lot going well for him. Broussard coming in motion. We'll go with the end around. No blocking there, unfortunately. That's going to be a loss of two. And unfortunately, throughout this game, we've just had one or two plays where the offensive line is completely worthless and they give up so much. Simmons, that's a good four-yard carry for him. And Ohio is going to take their first time out with 2.16 on the clock.
Now it's third and eight, but being up four, I'm going to make sure that we just hold on to the ball here. Simmons in at the running back, but we got to make sure that we can at least score a field goal. Can't throw an interception. That's a good five-yard carry. It forces them to take their second timeout. And now on fourth and three, we should just be able to put up this little chip shot field goal. 21-yarder, or sorry, 26-yarder. Uh, and that's up and through. No problem. So back up seven. We can breathe a little bit. Oregon State, the giant killers. Looking to win that one. Up three late in the fourth. That'd be nice to see uh, an upset there. Always exciting. Touchback on the kickoff. 204 and one timeout for Ohio to work with. They go four yard rush on first down. Second down is a big 20 yard pass. Pass thrown away on, third, or on that next first down. This second and 10, it's a big 32 yard pass. And we got to start watching these plays. They are moving incredibly quickly. This feels like the end of the last game where they march down the field and score it on us. Quarterback steps back looking to throw. He's got a man who just barely can't catch that one. Gawain's able to get in there for a nice pass breakup. As uh, again, they're going to step back to throw. Quarterback throws down to his check down in the running back. That's a loss of seven. Absolutely terrible decision there. This is a massive third and 17 for a team that is two of nine on their third downs in the game. A minute left on the clock. He's got to throw up a big one. That one caught, but it's short of the line again. So they're going to have to go for it on fourth and one. And the game is on the line here. It looks closer to fourth and two to me. So it's going to be a tough one to pick up. It's going to be an option. Quarterback doesn't get the pitch out in time. He had his man open with space, but it's a turnover on downs. So with just 56 seconds and one timeout left for the Bobcats, it's going to be victory for us as we survive. It looked like they had a chance to tie it up, but we just barely hold on long enough. Second and seven again, we'll hand it off to Jesse Wagner. And he makes a nice move. He's got some positive yards and it's third and two. We will have to run another play, but it's just going to be us coming out in the victory formation to take a knee as we will go to start our conference schedule 1-0. That is absolutely massive. And as the clock hits triple zeros, we end up getting the win. 20-13, to way closer than I wish it would have been. Kind of a defensive battle at times. Uh, our pick six certainly didn't help. It's an ESPN classic game. Chris Banks, player of the game. He's the guy that forced the fumble and recovered the fumble as Ohio at one point was driving down the field awfully quickly. So there we go. Oh my gosh, another upset. UNC beats Clemson. The number 16 falls 23 to 17. It's a pretty big game. Washington loses to Tulsa. <laughs> and uh, player of the game wise, Serge Mitchell as offensive player of the game. Three catches, 58 yards and a touchdown. Very, very mediocre this game. And Chris Banks, again, defensive tackle, overall player of the game, defensive player of the game, forced the fumble, got the fumble recovery, had two sacks, three tackles for loss, definitely worth the honor. So we win, we improved a three and one on the season. We can advance to uh, week six already. My goodness, that's pretty quick. And we get our first commit, Marcus Brown, the right end, 76 overall. Again, I'm 99% Strutton is a Juco guy. Uh, first guy onto the board. So that is fantastic news. Uh, we get a bunch of XP and we'll get to play a 2 and one Akron that again is expected to win and is a slightly higher overall. Seems to be the case for almost every matchup this season. Unfortunately, that's going to be it for this episode. Again, if you want the chance to win a almost one-of-a-kind Goonmaster t-shirt, Go ahead and follow me on Twitter and then be looking for the giveaway tweet in the near future. Again, though, thank you guys so much for 2,500 subscribers. That is awesome. And I hope that we just continue to grow from here. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already as we move towards 5,000. If you've done both of those things, you can head down to the description where you can find links to uh, my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. It's also links to our Twitter. Again, follow there if you're trying to win uh, an exclusive t-shirt. 
and then there's a link to our community discord as well as the college football revamp mod if you're trying to get that for yourself all that being said though thank you guys so much for watching my name is Goonmaster. you guys are the gray boys and wherever you are have a good night or have a good morning and we'll see you later adios